Hello everybody, Cooper here and welcome back to another episode of my NBA 2K25 My GM series here with the Los Angeles Lakers. I hope you're all doing very well today. It is the second round of the playoffs in the 2026 playoffs and for the second consecutive year we'll be taking on the Oklahoma City Thunder who actually look like a better team than last year. So we're going to have a quick look at their roster and it is basically the same as last year with a few slight adjustments. They did trade for Jeremy Grant mid-season for Isaiah Hartenstein. So he's going to be starting at small forward as Lou Dort is currently out for the season with a broken right ankle. Apart from that, they've got Grant Williams on the bench and a whole bunch of rookies that they drafted. Apart from that, everything else basically the same. Our roster looking very nice as it has done for most of this season. I'm, I've been pretty happy with the roster since since the trade period. We signed a few guys in the offseason that we've since moved on. We've still got the majority of our signings from the offseason, but we did secure a trade to get Benedict Matherin, and he's been very good in the playoffs so, what, playoffs so far. 14.8 points per game on very good efficiency. He probably shoot a little bit better from the foul line, but I'm not complaining. Those are some terrific numbers. We now have to simulate, we don't have to, we will simulate a few games in the playoffs to see how we are going and it'll be nice to see how we compare to some other teams in the playoffs. We are yet to lose a playoff game in this series, so hopefully that trend can continue. Game one, oh, we lose to the Thunder at home by six points. Cam Thomas goes off for 42 and we still lose. Three players had five fouls, Jovic who's been very good this playoffs. If you haven't watched the last episode, I recommend you go back and watch it. Only had the seven points. Dillingham had 17. Davis, 27, 10 and five with four blocks. Only missed four shots. It was very good. And LaMelo Ball, 17 and 17. Shot seven for 22 from the field. Wasn't great. On the OKC side of things, Shea Gilgis Alexander, 35, six and eight. Four steals, two blocks, was very good. J-Dub, 21, nine and six. 9 for 10 shooting was very good. Chet Holmgren, 24, 12 and 4. Shot a bit inefficiently, but the OKC have made us lose a playoff game. That is disappointing. Game 2. We're down two games to zero. Looks like Cam Thomas fouled out in this one. Lamelo 23 and 11. Anthony Davis, 15, 14 and 5. Lose by 22 at home, so both home games we lose. Chet was outstanding in this one, as was Shea Gilgis Alexander. J Dub got a triple double as well. We move into game three in OKC. We get the win back. 14 point win. Shea goes off for 38, 5, and 4. Gets two seals and two blocks as well. J Dub gets a double double. Chet Holmgren does the same. Chet Holmgren actually fouled out in this one. And if we go over to us. Cam Thomas, 33, three and five. Anthony Davis almost gets a triple-double with blocks. He was exceptional. Nikolajovic fouled out in 30 minutes. Must win game four. I believe this one's also in Oklahoma City. We get the win once again. 10-point win, Shea goes off for 27. Chad Holmgren gets five blocks. But it's our four starters, Do Jovic, Davis, Thomas, and Lamelo. 20 points plus each. Three players get, sorry, four players get double doubles. A Kongwu, six offensive rebounds. Very impressive. This next game, I believe it's in Los Angeles. We get the win once again. Oh my lord. Cam Thomas has broken the playoff record that we set early in the last season. LeBron. Broke the record with 65 points. Cam Thomas goes off for 67. He also gets five fouls. We have two players foul out and two players on five fouls. What, what is Cam Thomas's actual career high? It's 52. The, the highest points of the game so far this season is 62 by Luca, which, which we just saw. Cam Thomas has smashed that. 67, only got the two assists. 23 of 29 from the field, 8 for 11 from 3, 13 and 15 from the foul line. 
Lamelo gets 22 and 13. Dillingham 21 and 6. Davis almost gets a triple double with assists this time. Jovic fouls out in 16 minutes. I'm not entirely sure how that's possible, but we win by 25 at home. We now have game six. Meanwhile, New York has beaten Detroit as New York advanced to the conference finals for the second year in a row. Indiana, a 3-1 up on Chicago. If they win, they will play New York for the second consecutive year in the Eastern Conference Finals. Dallas are up three games to do against Minnesota. If Minnesota win, they go to the Conference Finals. Or well, if they win the series, of course, they go to the Conference Finals. Where will they play? Hopefully us if we win this game. But if Dallas win, who have been our toughest opponent so far this series, that'll be a tough series because they have got a very, they've got a stacked squad, Dallas. But we've got to win this game first. I'm a bit bullish to see how we go. I don't believe I showed this at the end of the last episode. But this is the current rotation. Lamello, Dillingham, Cam Thomas, Anthony Davis getting a ton of minutes. And then we have basically a seven-man rotation. Both the Christie boys, Bronny, they're all out of the rotation. Bol Bol, they're all out. So we're really sticking with seven guys in the simulation. That is what we're going with. Hopefully it pays off. Obviously we're gonna play this game, not simulate it, but for the rest of the simulation as well. Let's get into it. 67 and 15 Lakers, 50 and 32 OKC. I should mention we had to simulate the, I can't remember who it is, not the New York Detroit series, the, who was the Indiana Chicago series. The Pacers have advanced to the Eastern Conference Finals. So there will be a rematch in the Eastern Conference Finals. Will the Lakers advance as well? We are bound to find out. And we can see in the bottom right, Minnesota have beaten Dallas. So if Minnesota win their next game, we might have a double replay in the conference finals. We will wait and see. Lamelo, can he get to the rim to start this game? He can, but he misses, unfortunately. This game, I think it's going to depend on our defense. Speaking of defense, that was terrible. As Jeremy Grant pulls up in the mid-range. Ugh. I'm not a big fan of this matchup, to be honest, because Anthony Davis up against Chet Holmgren is a tough ask. Cam Thomas came off a 67-point game earlier in the playoffs, gets that first bucket to go. Apparently he hasn't been that good against OKC in the regular season, at least. Three games, 19 points a game, but was shooting over 50% from three. Caruso... Gets by the Chet Holmgren screen. Can't get by Dillingham. Although Dillingham's putting a bit of a body on him. Jeremy Grant's in the corner. Shea's up top. Also a tough matchup for Lamelo. Just from a size point of view, he gets two more. But I think if we're going to win this game, we're going to win this game with two things. With lots of defense and plenty of threes. First three of the ball game goes to Lamelo Ball. Great screen by Anthony Davis. As we just got to sh out shoot OKC and defend well at the rim. Speaking of which, OKC, not OKC, Anthony Davis blocks Shea Gilgis Alexander at the rim. Cam Thomas pulls up in the mid range, releases a little off, doesn't go. Shea another rebound. Lamelo picks him up on the break. Nobody's on Chet Holmgren. Oh, gee, I am all over the shot, but the shot goes in. AD, pick and fade with Lamelo Ball. Ball is swung to the corner. Cam Thomas for three. Five on the game so far. Nikolajovic, very good defensive play there on Jalen Williams. I almost called him Jalen Green. Shea misses the dunk. You don't see that very often. Dillingham, actually Davis is inside by himself. Misses the shot, gets the offensive rebound. A little bit lucky there. Jovic just gets tied up by Caruso. Dillingham has Chet Holmgren in front of him. Gets to the rim and finishes strong. I know it's early, but we've checked in Benedict Matherin. Nikola Jovic has taken out of the game. Jalen Williams is a power forward, but he's only 6'5", 6'6". 
So I think Benedict Matherin can actually stay with him on the inside. I'm not that worried about it. And obviously, if he can shoot some threes in the meantime, that would be great as well. Davis's Chet on the perimeter. Not a fan of that. Dillingham can't get by Caruso. Cam Thomas puts the jumper up, misses as J-Dub gets the rebound. Matherin picks him up on the perimeter, stays with him, forces the miss. Dillingham bringing the ball up on the break. Gets to the rim, nobody picks him up. J-Dub got around a set of screens. Matherin did well to catch up with him. Lamello does the same with Shea. Screen set by J-Dub. Good D so far by the Lakers on this possession. Shea for three. We'll get Matherin to set the screen. Fade. Didn't really fade that far. What on earth are we doing? Dillingham is found on the perimeter. We could go left on Caruso. Matherin gets by J-Dub. Beat Chet to the rim. He gets his first points of the ball game. We should have taken advantage of, of Thomas on Chet. Speaking of Chet and Thomas, Thomas picks up the loose ball. Now it's Jeremy Grant on him. Same should apply. If we can get by Jeremy Grant, which we can't on this possession. Matherin, actually Davis is on Caruso. Former teammates, of course. Double comes. Matherin for three. Knocks it down. Six point game to the Lakers advantage. But Chet, we really don't have a matchup because he's so flexible and Shea obviously has a size about him he's just a big guard who does good things whereas I feel like Chet if we can rotate Davis and Okongwu between him we should be okay Davis sets the screen for Lamelo. Lamelo gets to the paint beats Shea off the dribble step back by Shea hits it over Lamelo. great play He's been a 30 point per game scorer for the last couple of seasons, Shea. He is very good. Davis sort of gets in the way there. Matherin is found, will put up another three. Hits it again. That's a handful of threes for Matherin. He's now got eight points and I believe that leads all scorers. Anthony Davis in the corner for three. Misses the jumper. Now we've got to get back in transition. This is the tricky part. Lamelo picks up Jeremy Grant, stays in front of him. Matherin now on Shea. That's actually not a bad matchup. Shea fading for three. Misses. Davis gets the rebound. Finds a Kongwu in transition. Oh, Matherin wasn't behind the three-point line. Otherwise, I would have taken it. Davis finds a Kongwu. Gives it up to Cam Thomas. Ten on the shot clock. Trying to get by Case and Wallace. Gets to the rim. I think is fouled by Chet. He's going to get two free throws. Two for two for Cam Thomas at the line. We're getting a lot of production out of our guards so far. Not a lot out of our bigs. Which I don't mind as long as, you know, we're still in the lead and maintaining the game. Matherin contests Case and Wallace. Concedes the foul though. Shea Gilgis Alexander getting to the rim again. Misses as Matherin gets the rebound. Bringing the ball up. Oh, Cam Thomas is open. We get, actually, uh, we should have found him earlier. Misses his last couple of shots, Cam Thomas. Jeremy Grant for three. He knocks it down. Three-point game. Minute and a half to go in the quarter. There's been some positive. There's also been a few negatives. Lamello probably should have gone to the gone to the lane there. Bendik Matherin gets to the rim. Too easy to get by Jeremy Grant. Case and Wallace being guarded by Matherin. J Dub. On Davis. Cam Thomas. Jeremy Grant is way too big for Cam Thomas. He gets the easy finish over the top of him. Lamelo has been good so far, but can be better. A Kongwu gets in the way when setting the screen again. We do that again, thank you. Lamelo this time gets a good screen. Gets the two points to go. 45 seconds in the quarter. We need a good defensive play here. Kaysen Wallace is in the corner by himself. Collects it. Knocks it down. Lakers not going to get the two for one. Not at least this quarter. AD sets the screen for Lamelo. Gets to the rim. Another two points to Lamelo driving by Shea. He's now got nine on the game. 
to go with his three assists. 15 seconds to go in the quarter. Lakers lead by four. OKC trying to stay in the game. Mm, Shea scores an easy basket. He's been very good. Six seconds to go. Cam Thomas, can he get to the rim? He's going to get there and scores to extend the lead to four at quarter time. It's been very competitive so far, both teams, but going basket for basket. It's been a tight series so far. Hopefully, the Lakers can continue. If we look at the box score, Benedict Matherin, 10 points on four shots. Perfect efficiency from him so far. Cam Thomas has nine points on seven shots. He's missed three three-pointers. You can probably get a little bit more out of him. I know he is capable. Lamelo's been very good, four or five from the field, one of one from deep. Nine points, four assists, and a rebound to his name. And Dillingham is the only other scorer. He's got two points, sorry, four points on three shots. Two of them made. okongwu has got a rebound. Davis has got four rebounds, two steals, and a block. And Jovic only has a rebound. Hasn't taken any shots so far in the game. In terms of OKC, they've only had three players score. Shea Gilgis Alexander has 15, 4, and 2, leading all scorers. Jeremy Grant, 9 points on 4 shots, hasn't missed so far. And Kaysen Wallace is 1 for 2 from the field. And I believe also 1 for 2 from the foul line. He's got 4 points and assists. Grant Williams hasn't done anything. J-Dub hasn't done anything. Caruso and Holmgren haven't shot the ball. I'm quietly confident that we can win this series. But it's going to be up to our guards, because our bigs haven't shown a lot in this game. I think our guards are going to get us done for. And if we look at the team comparison, we haven't shot well from three. We've shot okay from the field, but the Thunder actually out shooting us. Bench points have been good. Second chance points, assists, offensive rebounds have been really good. Defensive rebounds are tied. Steals are tied. Fouls are tied. Turnovers are tied. They lead us in fast break points, but I'm not too worried about that. The advantage is only three points. But there's a, still a lot of basketball to play. Let's continue game six. Nikola Topic checks into the game. I believe it's Nikola. We've got Nikola Jovic, Nikola Jokic, and Nikola Topic. All in the NBA at the same time. What a world we live in. I was too busy celebrating about the name. He's actually scored the first points of the quarter. Jovic, speaking of Jovic, checks into the game for Anthony Davis. As Lamelo gets to the rim again. Let's go pick and roll, or sorry, pick and fade with Lamelo and a Kongwu. Chet Holmgren, not the best perimeter defender. Nikola Jovic gets the wide open three as we swing the ball. He gets his first shot of the game to go. Five point game at this stage. Kaysen Wallace. Oh, I don't like this matchup between Kaysen Wallace and Nikola Jovic. Chet pulls up in the mid range as Jovic gets the rebound. A pleasant surprise. Matherin finds Okongwu. What a pass. As Okongwu, we finally get a big man to score. That is a slick pass by Benedict Matherin, who we should keep in mind is a free agent. And we did trade three first round picks to get him at, the tr at Christmas. So we should probably re-sign him. I would like to. Chet Holmgren is left wide open as Jovic gets another rebound. We advance the ball to Cam Thomas, who gets by Kaysen Wallace, is fouled. Can't make the shot though. Two for two at the line for Cam Thomas. And yes, as I said, we did trade three first round picks for Benedict Matherin, two of which are in this year's draft. One of them will probably be the 30th pick in the draft, which is our own pick. And then we traded the, it was a swap wet, sorry, swap best between the Rockets, I believe, and the Spurs. Now the Spurs are, I think they finished with the 12th worst record in the NBA. So it ended up being not too bad because I was a little bit concerned about the trade. Then Wembenyama, who tore his Achilles very early in the season, ended up coming back before the playoffs. So he was able to win the Spurs some games for us, which was very nice of him. Lamelo gets two points at the rim. OKC call timeout. But yeah, if that number one pick or that first round pick from the Rockets via Spurs hits number one, I'll be very upset. I don't think it will, considering it's projected to be 12th overall, as Holmgren hits a nice jumper there. But you never know, the draft lottery is a mysterious beast. 
Jovic sets the screen for Dillingham, who's checked back into the game. Nobody puts him, or nobody picks him up, I should say, as he puts down the dunk. He has been very good in his limited minutes so far. And we also traded, I think it was our 2030 first round pick, which if we continue our current form, we should be okay. That should be around a late 20s, around the 30th pick as well. This game, we've brought in the Jimmy Stopper, Max Christie, who's very good against Dallas in that game we had when we brought him in to guard Jimmy Butler in the fourth quarter and Jimmy did absolutely nothing. So we've called in the Jimmy Stopper from now on. And Max Christie, also a very low-key clutch performer as well. Hit a nice three earlier in that Dallas game as well. He sort of does a spin half 360 move on Caruso. Sort of dribbled in a corner. Matherin gets by J-Dub and he dunks the ball. He's got 14. But I am a little bit concerned about Benedict Matherin's free agency. Obviously, he is a very good player. That's a good contest. Okongwu gets the rebound. Only his second for the game. But considering Matherin's not a starter, I don't know how much to pay him. Dillingham gets the layup to go. Ideally, it would be less than $20 million a season, but considering we traded... Uh, it was Jared Allen we traded for Okongwu because he was a center, our backup center, and he was making $20 million a season. I don't want to appear to be a hypocrite, but we'll wait and see what happens. Let's try Jovic in the pick and fade. He's only got Grant Williams on him. Grant Williams, what are we doing here? What is that dark magic? Christie trying to get to the rim, gets held up by Caruso. Matherin off the dribble, hands off to Dillingham, Makes the shot. That was an absolute grenade, but we'll take it. Matherin on J-Dub so far has been a success. That was not a highlight of that success. Grant Williams gets a dunk. Hasn't been the same since he left Boston, but it's okay. He still made a lot of money. Dillingham pulls up, gives the pump fake. A Kongwu, we're not shooting that. Dillingham... Another three misses on this occasion. Kaysen Wallace, nobody's picked him up. Max Christie gets lost to Kongwu. Sends it out of bounds. Coming out of the timeout after the Kaysen Wallace three. We've made a few additional changes. Cam Christie and AD back in the game. As Lamelo gets a nice dunk there. But yeah, Cam Christie hasn't got a lot of run in the back half of this season. We just want to see how we go with him with a few minutes here in the second quarter. We tried the same thing with Bol Bol in the last episode. It did not go to plan. So hopefully it works a little bit better here. Anthony Davis still hasn't scored, wow. Cam Christie, we'll give it to Anthony Davis here at the top of the key. There we go, AD finally on the board. Lamelo on Shea, can't really stay with him. Steps back, makes the midi. Cam Christie finds Lamelo. We'll go pick and roll with the Kongwu. Lamelo, there we go. Beautiful pass. Gets the easy slam as well. Leads out to 10. Just not great. J-Dub for three. Davis gets the seventh rebound. A Kongwu, who can run the break. As Kaysen Boz crosses over, Anthony Davis up the top again. Hits another three. 13 points is the lead. 10 to two run in the last two and a half minutes. Screens coming by J-Dub. Cam Christie goes under, sticks with Cam. Oh, oh. another and one conceded. Kaysen Wallace finishes strong. AD sets the screen for Lamelo. Lamelo's got tons of space. He now has 17 on the game. He has been sneaky. You know, our sneaky high scorer. We feel like I haven't scored that many buckets with him, but I don't think I've taken a ton of shots with him either. He's been very good. Davis trying to save with J-Dub. Goes up for the block. A Kongwu. A little bit handsy on the inside. Two minutes to go in the quarter. AD on the pick and roll. Lamelo's got a ton of space. Hits the three. Great pull up three by Lamelo. 11 in the quarter. He has been excellent so far. And then gives up a wide open dunk to Shea Gilgis-Alexander off the spin move. 
That was very good, to be fair. 10 on the shot clock. Lamello has done a good job on this possession, guarding Shea. The Jimmy Stopper on Jeremy Grant. Screen comes. Don't foul. Great defense, LA. Now we've got 50 seconds on the quarter. We shouldn't do anything stupid. Shea guarding Lamello. Lamello gets by. Puts up two more points. Cam Christie on Caruso. Holmgren for three. In and out. Christie gets the rebound. Should slow it down for the last shot. And by that means, I let's put it in the hands of Lamello, who's having one of the best games I've seen from him in a while. AD going to set the screen and roll. Let's get to the rim. Little finger roll. Lead by 15 with four seconds to go in the first half. Shea from three-quarter court. Misses the shot. Very good quarter by the Lakers. OKC didn't show as much fight in that quarter. The end of the series is only two quarters away. When I said I hadn't taken many shots with Lamelo, I was right. I've only taken 12 shots with him for 11 makes. 24 points on the game, six assists, two for two from the three-point line, no free throws made. Matherin's only played the 16 minutes, but has 14 points, also hasn't missed a shot. Dillingham's been good in limited minutes. Cam Thomas has been good while inefficient. Davis the same, very good defensively not having his best offensive game. Okongwu, not too bad, you know, in terms of an offensive perspective, but his main focus is, you know, defense. Jovic has only taken one shot. He's got three rebounds to his name. The Jimmy Stopper's only been in for 10 minutes, and Cam Christie has an assist with two threes missed. So, some guys doing very well, other guys not so good. The Thunder, Shea Gilch Alexander, 19 points on 19 shots, one of six from three. I feel like we're doing a good job. Kaysen Wallace has been sneaky in this game, 12 points, including two threes. Jeremy Grant hasn't missed a shot. J Dub has been a little disappointing, but I still like his game. Nikola Topic, I didn't think he was going to get playoff minutes, but he's been very good in the time he's played. Chet Holmgren has been pretty disappointing. I feel like we've done a good job. You know, keeping him relatively contained. But Shea is just jacking up shots, so I'm pretty happy with that. And Grant Williams has, you know, been out there. Team comparison-wise, 66% from the field is nothing to get upset about. 45% on threes is basically, you know, very good. Not a lot to complain about at this point in time. We're up by 15 at half time on our way to a second consecutive Western Conference Finals. I'm, I'm very happy. There's nothing really much more to say. Let's get into the second half. Second half underway. Lamelo, Shea. Oh my lord, I'm not paying attention. <laughs> Chet Holmgren just killed AD on the perimeter. Let's try again. Except let's do a good job offensively. Lamelo, what? Okay, we'll, we'll take it. Now OKC in transition. Oh, Shea is on fire. 23 points on the game, 10 in the mid-range. He has been very good. Jovic sets the screen. Whoa, that's a terrible pass. Okay, Matherin, pick up Jeremy Grant. Stay with him. Good contest. AD gets another rebound. Lamelo, Jovic is out. If we can get it to him, he misses the layup. Okay, let's calm the farm a little bit. We're moving too fast. We need to calm down. Gilgis Alexander guarded by Lamelo, a little too close. Step back to the foul line. Misses. Jovic has a fifth rebound. Matherin's running to the corner. I want to find him. We do find him. Put up the three. We've missed another one. Cam Thomas now has the task of guarding Jeremy Grant. Caruso gets absolutely hacked by Matherin and gets the points to go. Misses the free throw, however. Cam Thomas has space. We get the ball a little too late, but he gets to the rim. This time, gets some points on the board. J-Dub pulls up from the foul line, misses. 
Davis gets another rebound. We advance the ball to Cam Thomas. Tries to get by Shea. Goes up at the left and makes it. He's got 15 back-to-back -back baskets for Cam Thomas. Lead back out to a 13-point game. I believe 15 points is where it was at its highest. Thomas blocks Shea's step back. Thomas finds Anthony Davis on the break. AD too slow. Lamelo, Jovic is open. Hits the three. His second shot of the ball game. Or his second three of the ball game, I should say. Extends the lead out to 16. Lamelo guarded by Sh uh, Lamelo not doing a great job <laughs> guarding Shea Gildas Alexander. We need to do better. Anthony Davis sets the screen. Lamelo pulls up. Knocks it down, he's got 27. He has been playing excellently so far. 92% field goal percentage in the first half. We need more of that in the second half. Anthony Davis guarding Chet Holmgren. Caruso, I don't know if that was blocked by Davis. That one was blocked by Davis. Here we go in transition. Matherin kicks to Lamello. Has Chet up in the air. Gets by, gets by. Gets sent back. Great defensive work by both teams. Oh, Shea Gilders Alexander, that's a long two. Couldn't get behind the three point line. A couple of nothing possessions back to back for the Lakers. Oh, now I have the update thing. I'm, I'd really like that to go away, but I know it won't for the rest of the video because there's no save and quit option. Okay. Matherin has Jeremy Grant. Can we get to the rim, please? There we go. 17-point game. Lamelo staying with Shea. Steps back, makes it. He is 29, the rest of the team 43. Goodness gracious. Lamelo drives, kicks to Matherin. Gets those three points back. Actually, Shea's wasn't a three, but we get the three to go. It's time to get excited. Lamello really struggling on Shea. Davis is all over Chet. Staying with it. Fouls on this occasion. Cam Thomas gets by Caruso. Gets to the rim, gets blocked by Chet. Probably a bit ambitious trying to take him on. Davis on J-Dub. Stays with him. He makes the shot, however. Lamello bringing the ball up. We find Matherin. J... not J-Dub. Jeremy Grant. Doing good defensively. Layup goes. We try Holmgren. What happened there? I think it was an illegal screen. Actually, the update thing is in the way. I'm just gonna, if I can save an exit, I will. All is better with the world. Okay. Shake you, just Alexander. Finds Chet down low. He gets the bucket. What's the play? Cam Thomas will back up on Case and Wallace, will drive right. Oh, the ball gets stripped. Great defense, Case and Wallace. Ball finds Shea. Chet Holmgren has plenty of space. Lamello foul Shea. Only his second foul. Just resting a few guys before the start of the fourth. Dillingham sets. Oh, not sets. Matherin sets the screen for Dillingham, I should say. Dillingham finds Matherin with the assist. Dillingham now finds his way onto Shea. This will be interesting because Dillingham can't guard a square of grass. Ugh. Go pick and fade with Matherin. Dillingham. Matherin's for three. There we go. 26 on the game for Matherin. 12 in the quarter. He's been very good. 15 point game. Max Christie. Can't stop Shea on that possession. What is going on? This is terrible spacing by everybody involved. Dillingham on Jeremy Grant, that's concerning. Matherin, Case and Wallace. Oh, good. Good job, Case and Wallace. Lead under 10. Can we get a bucket? Let's just get an easy bucket. Dillingham, ooh, no. Cam Thomas. Can't get Case and Wallace in the air. Gets blocked again at the rim. We don't get the offensive rebound. Cam Thomas is having a stinker. After scoring 67 earlier in the series. He used up all his points in that game to not be able to score in this game. Thomas gets around the case and oh sorry, the Chet screen. Case and Wallace initiating a lot of contact. Gives it up to J-Dub, who's Kongwu on him. 
Don't foul. I think that's it. Yes, shot clock violation. Great job. All right, Shay, I believe, is out of the game. So hopefully that will make our job a little bit easier. Dillingham has space. Hits the three. I thought a foot might have been on the line, but it wasn't. He now has 14. Thomas guarding Case and Wallace. He gets another and one. I have lost track with how many and ones Case and Wallace has initiated in this game. Subs made. Cam Thomas is going to have a sit. We've, we've turned to Bronny. I don't think has played in about four months, but it's okay. We'll see what he can produce on the biggest stage. He gets to the rim. Gets two points straight away. 45 seconds in the quarter. We'll go pick and fade once again. Ooh, Matherin. I think that's a two. No, it's a three. He gets behind. 29 on the game. Very good work so far. Dillingham, just Topic just blasts by him. Not good enough by Dillingham. All right, let's get to the rim as quickly as we can with Dillingham. Gets fouled. Can't hit the second, unfortunately. Kaysom Wallace only has the Jimmy stopper between him and the rim. And he gets by. One last possession to end the third. It's a nine point game. I think we go pick and fade with the Kongwu. Dillingham, that is deep. Can't hit. Not a great shot to be honest. Caruso pulls up for three. Misses, it's a nine point game. OKC win the quarter. They need to win the game to keep the series alive. Three quarter time, Matherin now leading the scoring, 29 points on 14 shots. He has been very efficient. Lamelo also has been very good. Dillingham picked up a couple of minutes that quarter and has done his bit. Cam Thomas, uh, not his best game. Davis has been pretty quiet. Jovic has been good from the shots he's taken. Okongwu also very quiet oh, no. in terms of offense, defense, he's been very good. Bronny. He'd lay up good for him. The Jimmy stopper has been okay. He hasn't had his best game. And Cam Christie is, has done some stuff as well. In terms of OKC, Shea Gilders Alexander, 35 points on 30 shots. His field goal percentage is above 50 now, but he's still got a lot of work to do. Kaysen Wallace has got 19 points in 22 minutes. He's been very good. Chet had a very good quarter. He's now got 12 and nine with three blocks. J-Dub. It's not been his best game, but it's okay. And Jeremy Grant has also been good. Team-wise, I'll give the quarter to OKC. They've been very good. Our biggest lead was 18. It is now half of that. So we would like it to be closer to 18 than to be closer to zero. But if we can just steer the course, stay where we are, nine point game at the end of the quarter will be lovely. We'll be through to the conference finals. Obviously we won't be complacent, but if we can just do what we want, and not do anything stupid in the meantime. That would be lovely. Fingers crossed. Our starting five is in the game and OKC do not have theirs in the game. Hopefully we can extend the lead in this period. Lamelo gets to the rim and emphatically slams that down to set the tempo for the rest of the quarter, hopefully. Topic still in the game. I don't think he's missed a bucket yet. Cam Thomas on Caruso. J-Dub coming up off the screen. Dillingham has found his way onto him. Not a great matchup size-wise. Davis has a 12th rebound. Jovic finds Dillingham. I actually, Davis, oh, not, oh, that's not the shot I wanted. I accidentally made it. I'll take it. Topic just killing the shot clock here. Kaysen, actually Grant Williams, not Kaysen Wallace. I am all over the shot with my names. Dillingham guarding J-Dub. J-Dub gets by, pulls up at the foul line and hits it. Ball finds Jovic. We'll give it to Cam Thomas. Although he hasn't had a good game, I do believe in him. Get to the rim, make something happen. He gets the two to go. 17 on the game now. And Cam Thomas, he is averaging about 30 points per game in the playoffs. Bear in mind, he did score 67 of them in one game, which does help the average a little bit. We get the tip, Grant Williams for three. It's a shot, good for Grant Williams. An 11 point game, but I suppose we shouldn't Underrate Cam Thomas, even though he's having a bad game. Can't get to the rim on this occasion. Tries to go around. Finds Jovic for three. Hits again. Four of four from three for Jovic. 
Caruso is out. Thomas has not picked him up whatsoever. Goes up with it. Good contest. Gets the rebound. Actually, Davis gets the rebound. Jovic is running to the corner. That is good strategy. Thomas is in over his head here. Lamelo finds Jovic. Can he make it five for five? He can't, but Davis gets the rebound. Gets another rebound. <laughs> Two offensive boards for Davis. Jovic sets the screen for Lamelo. Kicks it to Dillingham. Goes for three. Another offensive rebound secured. Davis, Dillingham has space. This time. Oh, no. At least he missed. Lamelo has 29 and 8. Dillingham in the corner. Gets by Caruso. Draws a foul. It's an and one. Caruso has three fouls. We need to make the free throw. There we go. Free throw made. Eight and a half minutes to go. Shea still not in the game, but timeout is called. He might be checking in now. I don't think Shea's in foul trouble, so I don't think that should be a factor. Lamelo finds... Oh, Jovic has got a layup. There we go, Jovic. 14 and 7. He does play low-key starter minutes. But he's done very well. Case and Wallace now on ball handling duties. Lamelo going to give him a bit of space. Grant Williams is found inside. He blows the dunk. Davis has 16 rebounds. Lamelo is inside. Gives it to Dillingham. Jovic is up top. Has space. Misses the three. Case and Wallace gets around the screen. Dillingham leaves him a bit too open. Lamelo only has the two rebounds on the game. We're going to run in transition. Nothing really on. Jovic swings it to Davis. Thomas is in the corner. Can he hit it? Yes, he can. Lamelo guarding Wallace. Davis is staying with him. Caruso takes the three. Davis secures another rebound. Cam Thomas running in transition. Gets past Caruso. Can't draw the foul, but gets the bucket to go. Five and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. 20 point lead. It's a bit odd that the Thunder haven't played Shea at all in this last quarter. I say that and he's in the game now. And Chet is also in the game. Actually no, Chet's just checked out. Dillingham guarding Shea. Good contest. Davis, 19 rebounds. You can rely on him defensively. Double crossover. Finds Davis. Dillingham has space, but I don't want to pull the three there. Davis tries to find Jovic on the back cut, but it's not a good pass. Case and Wallace actually gets the ball back. Good intercept by Davis. Dillingham. Thomas in the corner. Once again, doesn't hit the three. J-Dub on the break. Lamelo on him. We get another steal. Let's slow the pace down. We've got less than five minutes to go until we're through to the conference finals. Pick and fade. Davis has a bit of space. We'll take the three. He makes the three. It's a double-double for Davis. Case and Wallace gets the handoff from Shet. Dillingham down low. Chet going to set another screen. Case and Wallace goes with it. Pulls up for three. Davis has 20 rebounds on the game. Lamelo gives it to Davis, who's running in transition. Gives it to Jovic, who pops the three. Three more to the Lakers. We should be home from here. 26 point game, four minutes to go. It's been the starters that have taken us home. Jeremy Grant in the game now. Shea Gilgis Alexander coming off the screen. They still to, they need to start launching threes as he pulls up in the mid range once again for his first points of the quarter. Davis gonna set a screen for Lamelo. Shea gets by, swings it to Thomas in the corner, gives it back to Lamelo. This time to Dillingham, gets to the basket, no foul. No basket, unfortunately. Case and Wallace gets the rebound. Lamelo trying to stay with it. Thomas. <sighs> Davis just lets Chet Holmgren behind. We'll go pick and roll. Hopefully it works. Dillingham gets in the way. 
We almost get the three to go. Thomas gets to the basket. Gets by Chet this time. Gets the two points to go. Starting to let go of the lead now. It was up to 26, I think, at one stage. Now down to 18. Starting to take our foot off the pedal a little bit. Jovic has J-Dub ahead of him. Dillingham on the wing. There's a down screen. Cam Thomas coming off the screen. This three should go. Another wasted possession by the Lakers. Dillingham trying to... Ooh. Does not stop Jeremy Grant whatsoever. We get the stop on the play though. We're going to run the break. Hopefully we can get a basket here. That would be ideal. Dillingham has space. Should also have the legs to get by Jeremy Grant. And does. We get the dunk to go. Dillingham has 20. Less than a minute to go now. Davis tries to intercept Holmgren. Good find by Shea. That is an excellent pass to Holmgren. Still fighting to the end, what I like to see, although it looks like they're trying to bring in the subs via the bench. Holmgren doesn't stay with Davis on the screen. Let's kill a bit more time. Davis on the pick and fade. Lamello gets to the rim, is fouled by Shea. Just his first foul of the game, but Lamello, you'd think he's player of the game in this one. Put up the free throw. That's 30, and there's 31. 20 point game, 35 to go. Top pitch is in with the bums. Shea's also out there, so we shouldn't forget about Shea. But we've still got our starting five in. We're gonna fight until the end, until this game is done. Barely half a second between game and shot clock. What do we do from here? We could do absolutely anything we like and it wouldn't change the result of the game whatsoever. So we may as well kill a bit of time. Lamelo, let's get to the rim. He does. Puts an explanation point, explanation point, excuse me, on the game. 140 defeats 120. LA defeat OKC in six games. And we get through to the Western Conference Finals once again. Box score time and to complete the game, Lamelo finishes 40 minutes, 33 points, 11 assists, 14 for 18 shooting, 3 of 5 from 3. Bendik Matherin didn't play in the last quarter. We didn't need him in the end. 29 points on 28 minutes. Very good. Cam Thomas ended up with 24. Had a very good fourth quarter to redeem himself a little bit. 2 of 10 from 3 isn't great. Hopefully that fixes itself in between now and the conference finals. Dillingham also gets 20. Jovic, 17. Anthony Davis had a very good defensive game. Shooting-wise, not great. Other than that, Okongwu was good in the minutes he played, and everybody else only played a handful of minutes. Shea was excellent. Kaysen Wallace was pretty good in an unexpected cameo. J-Dub got a few junk time points at the end of the game. Chet Holmgren was pretty good, but the rest of the team really didn't show up in this one as the Lakers win semi-convincingly in the end. And if we have a look at the team stats, it was pretty comprehensive. The domination we had in the uh, field goal percentage, three-point percentage, and free throw percentage. They only shot 25% from deep. They were very good on the fast break and getting points in the paint. Second chance points were, you know, there wasn't that many to get. Bench points, we outdid them by one. We got more assists. There was a lot of offensive rebounds in this game. Turnovers were equal. Steals and blocks were pretty much equal. Our biggest lead was 26. We eventually won by 20. And there was a, quite a few lead changes early on, but I was very happy with this game as I will want to check how many offensive rebounds we sort of got per player. I think Davis ended up with quite a few. Yeah, he ended up with four. And then Cam Thomas, Jovic, Okongwu all ended up with one apiece. But that is very good. I wonder who we'll be taking on in the conference finals. So as we saw in game, we knew that Minnesota tied things up with Dallas. We knew that New York had beaten Detroit. So it's gonna be a repeat in the East. Will it be a repeat in the West? We're going to the wrong side. It won't be a repeat in the West. We're gonna take on Dallas, who were our toughest competition in the regular season. We'll have a look at game seven of the Minnesota Dallas series. Luca ends up with a triple-double. 
including eight threes as Dallas win 126-114. Jimmy Butler only got the nine points, did get 11 assists, which is something. Kyrie Irving had 30, Clay Thompson had 15. We can't say Anthony Edwards didn't show up. Carl Anthony Towns appears to have gotten injured, I'm assuming. So that probably didn't help the cause. But Nas Reed was the second leading scorer with 20. Rudy Gobert was very good defensively. Got four points, so good for him. But three steals, four blocks, and 11 rebounds is nothing to scoff at. Why is Dacian Nix playing so many minutes? Who is their point guard? Obviously, Mike Conley's not going to be around. Who is Minnesota's point guard? That's what I want to find out. Is Dacian Nix really their best point guard? Oh my god, he is. Jeez, that is awful. And he averaged, what, 16 a game last year? Well, this season? Wow. Oh, not very good efficiency. That's probably why they uh, struggled. And Towns is out for the season with a hamstring. So even if they won, he wouldn't have played in the next series. But that is going to do it for today. If you enjoyed today's video and are looking forward to the next video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, guys, I hope you have a lovely day wherever you are in the world. And I'll see you guys then. Bye.